And welcome to the show, everyone. It is GamerGod85. I'm here with Nintendo Fam85. We are live. Big night tonight, as you can know without tell. We're going to be doing a review of the long-awaited Sega Genesis Mini. I picked this up yesterday, but we've been I've been waiting to do an unboxing and a review on this, so we're definitely going to do that tonight. Just want to go. Just want to let everyone know the uh, Path to Affiliate contest is still ongoing. Um, first step to being entered into that is you got to be a follower on my Twitch channel. This will be up on YouTube after I edit and add a few things to it, but to be entered into the contest, you got to become a follower on Twitch. So my Twitch link is not only in the description below, but it's right there as well. Go over to my Twitch, hit the heart icon, and become a follower, and you're entered in to win $20 to the platform of your choice. If you're a viewer of the stream, you know, just leave me a quick hi when you drop in and a bye when you leave. And if you stay on for at least an hour, it's an entry for you. If you chat a lot, that's an entry. So that's a chance to earn two entries every night you watch. You definitely want to do that. And then um, my PlayStation Network ID is right up there. If you hit me up on the PlayStation Network and say you saw my Twitch stream, um, I'll definitely give you an entry for that as well. So this is going to look a little different than I normally do. I mean, because we're going to be doing a lot of moving around and stuff like that. But we're basically going to be doing a few things. We're going to unbox this bad boy. We're going to actually take this thing out of the box. We're going to review the whole thing. We're going to review the system, the hardware itself, the controllers, everything that's in this. And we're going to review all 42 games. We're going to go through and we're going to do a quick snippet showing how each of the games looks on it, sounds on it and give us our final thoughts. One thing to note, we are going to be looking out for the supposed double input error that's been going that has affected some preview units, but this isn't a preview unit. This is a this one I actually bought in store for full price. So we're going to see how it works. Sega! Just like how Nintendo restored the entire video game industry after the crash of 1983, they reignited the interest of retro games with this, their plug-and-play NES Classic. Now it's important to note that they weren't the first to do this in the market. That distinction, to the best of my knowledge, belongs to At Games, which we will be hearing a lot about shortly. But they were the ones who showed everyone the right way to do it. Perfect emulation, eye-catching, easy-to-navigate menus, and a console-defining selection of games. When the NES Classic launched in North America on November 11, 2016, the unit flew right off of store shelves, right into the hands of scalpers seeking a huge payday. And because nostalgia and retro games were huge again, and it was also right before the holiday season, People were actually willing to pay the bloated scalper price and get their hands on one of these things. I saw, I've saw, i seen people pay upwards of $300 for one of these that retailed for $60 at the stores. I actually had to wait till the second launch to get mine. Nintendo and the entire gaming industry as a whole knew there was a market for consoles like these. Since then, we've had everything from the Commodore 64 all the way up to the PlayStation get the classic treatment, with mixed results. The PlayStation Classic, in particular, is a unique example. It started off weak out of the gate with a feeble selection of games, poor emulation, and a bloated $100 price tag. Now, the only good thing I could, I could say about this when it came out is the build quality of the unit was spot on it was good however so many people loved this thing so much that it led to fans fixing all of those problems turning this little box the PlayStation Classic into arguably the best emulation box next to a full-on Raspberry Pi running RetroArch which this will run by the way ever since the announcement though of this the SNES Classic, we were all wondering one thing. Where's Sega? They were, they've been remarkably absent from this trend, which was surprising considering they've been having some success releasing their games onto cell phones, plus their success with compilation games released onto modern systems like the 
Sonic Mega Collection Plus or the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection on the PS3. Particularly, we were hoping to reignite the famous, the infamous Bit Wars with a Sega Genesis Classic. But the SNES Classic came and went, and we still heard nothing from Sega. Now, it's important to note, Plug and Play Genesis consoles had been released even before the NES Classic. You've probably seen them at discount stores like Dollar General or at Walgreens. These were made by a company called At Games. At Games was well known for making plug-and-play Atari clone consoles, and the emulation on those was very well done. Not to mention, At Games really went after the nostalgia factor by modeling those systems after the original Atari 2600. Because of that, Sega decided to allow At Games to release plug-and-play Genesis consoles that would include some of the best games the Genesis had to offer. Unfortunately, emulating the Genesis is a world different than emulating the Atari 2600. Emulating the Genesis has always been a difficult thing to do, even on higher-end PCs back in the day. Nonetheless, these consoles were made and released by At Games in both portable and console versions. And they're just terrible. Just, just terrible. They are crap quality, they feel like they're made of hollow, cheap plastic. They sound horrible, where things are either sound like they're slowed way down, or even entire octaves lower than they should be. And what's worse is, even though they usually boast having about 80 games on them, only half of those are actual Genesis games. The rest are filler games for that at games themselves make in-house, and they run just as terrible on hardway, hardware they designed. Uh, Shane from ReRes did a review on one of the first versions of these consoles, which has been dubbed the Firecore on his channel. Now this model only outputs via component video, making it sucky for modern televisions. GameSack reviewed a more modern unit that allowed for HDMI output, output, but it doesn't fare much better. Now I will give At Games one credit on, credit for one thing they attempted to do right. With both of those consoles, the FireCore and the HDMI version, you do have the ability to play actual Genesis cartridges on the system. So in a way, even though you only get 40 built-in Genesis games, you can you get whatever other games you want to throw into it and play. But even then, the same problems still exist and even cartridge games play horribly. Now you've got to be asking yourselves, why am I spending so much time discussing at games when we're here to talk about the Genesis Mini? Well, because at FES 2018, Sega announced they would be developing and releasing a Sega Genesis Classic. They had a goal to release it in time for their 30th anniversary in October of 2018. Our excitement over this announcement was very short-lived, as, on At Games Facebook page, they announced that their hardware would be powering the Genesis Mini. Needless to say, our excitement quickly turned to anger. How could Sega allow these butchers to churn out yet another crappy clone console, this time with the existence of Sega themselves? Fans were mad, outraged, and extremely vocal. Many comments were variations of, if At Games is involved, I'm out. Sega obviously really wanted to have a success with this, as they pushed the release of the Genesis Mini back a year to sept in September of 2018. Now, initially, there was no confirmation they were actually dropping at games from the development, but one major clue seemed to indicate this to be true. At games deleted the April 2018 announcement from their Facebook that they would be powering the Genesis Mini with their hardware. While this made us happy that Sega decided to finally ditch at games, we were still wondering who would Sega get to help them out now? We then came to find out they would seek out a partnership with a company known as M2. M2 is a game developer well known for handling emulation of re-released games for modern systems. 
Their story is long and their accolades are proven. For a full history of M2, I highly recommend watching the, this video from my life in gaming on M2. In short, M2 has, a, has long cracked the code for properly emulating the Sega Genesis for modern consoles for years. If anyone could ever port high quality games into a retro system, it was them. So Sega teams up with M2, and on September 19th, 2019, one year after they pushed back the release, here it is, the Sega Genesis Mini. Did At Games, did M2 do a better job than At Games? Does Sega still do what Nintendo don't? Let's find out. Um, so first thing we're gonna take a look at, Derek, if you don't mind holding that. Or of course. Buddy, if you don't mind holding that. We're gonna take a look at the box. Now, Sega really went all out on the box. As you can see here, there's the original box for the first model Genesis, and you could clearly see Sega's really gone all out for this system. I'm gonna turn the TV off so the reflection doesn't get on there. But yeah, Sega's really gone all out on this system. They've really outdone themselves giving, getting the details just right to bring back that nostalgic feel for the old Sega Genesis. Genesis does. What Nintendo don't. Mm -hmm. Now, let's open this thing up. Uh, oh yeah, so let's, fin let's finish last. So on the side here, this just tells you what's in the system. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got the Genesis logo and Sonic up on top. Most importantly, all 42 games. The back lists all the 42 games you mm -hmm. get with it. Um, just some legal stuff and stuff on the bottom Nothing here. Nothing important. Nothing important. Yeah. And now let's reveal the secrets of Genesis. <laughs> Genesis, what's that? All right, so we open this thing up. Uh, first thing we see oh, here. Cool. First thing we see here is looks like this, and you got your your power brick here. Mm -hmm. uh, one small note I'd like to point out uh, for those who have the NES, Super NES, or and the PS uh, Classic, excuse me, you can use the same power adapter for this as well. All right. Uh, now we, we're taking out the two controllers, Whoop, and there goes it. there goes the micro USB power wire. Um, of course, you get an HDMI cable. We will open that last. We're going to take a look at the controllers first. Everybody here is going to help me review these, so let's okay. take a look, take a look here. Look wow, this takes me back. Oh, wow, the buttons feel nice and clicky. I mean, looks exactly like the classic style three-button controller. Just like back when you played them back in the 90s, oh my uh, goodness. Even has the Even has the Sega logo <laughs> and everything on the back, just like the old days. Oh my god, I feel uh, like a kid again looking at everyone this. Only, everyone complains about not being the six-button controller, but I know me personally, this was the... First, and actually, this was the only controller I had for the Sega Genesis. Myself, I, I had the Super Nintendo. I will be the first to admit I was not a fan of the Sega Genesis when it came out in the 90s. I was more of a, I was, as I might, my name says, Nintendo fan, uh, Nintendo fan. I had the Genesis, but my neighbors had the. Uh, I did get the Genesis. I got the one that came with Sonic One. Mm -hmm. Got Sonic Two for free. Um, and of course, you got all your paperwork, which whoever reads that stuff. Yeah, some um, people do. We don't need all. We don't. We won't need all these because I'm just gonna hook it up using the same wires I've already got hooked up when I do my retro gaming. So we won't need that. Um, now we're gonna so. take we're gonna take these out of the wrapper here so we can because we're gonna need to plug them in eventually when we start playing these things. Mm -hmm. So we got that going on here. We'll put the stuff back in the box as we're doing it here. Make it easier. Yep. Keep everything all together. Keep it there. And we're good. Yes. They really wrap these up, don't they? Yeah. And hey, you know, Genesis really does what Nintendo don't. Look at this. Look at this line for the jet for the controller here. Look at how much you get. My goodness. Yeah. When the when Nintendo did the NES Classic, they sure didn't give you that much. I think it's. Probably longer than Super Nintendo. It might be. Yeah, I, I think, think it is. I, I think I, we have to we have to do a comparison, but I believe this is longer than Super Nintendo. Wow. So I mean, they give <laughs> they definitely give you enough lead. Of course, I'm still buying 8-bit Do's uh, new controller, and I'll be doing a review on that mm -hmm. when it comes in. Mm -hmm. But now, what's in the box, man? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? And here's the main event right here. Genesis Classic. Now I've seen a lot of reviews on this. Oh, they got they made this look so beautiful. 
Wow. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful that is. I mean, I'll be honest, for me, I was kind of hoping it'd be the Model 2, because that's the one I remember playing on, the first one it, and, in the 90s. I mean, so much detail. I mean, obviously you got your power and your reset buttons here, which you obviously need. But then they go above and beyond and do everything right. I mean, look, you got the working volume slider. <laughs> you've got a you got a cartridge slot that actually opens up. Yeah. And they even went so far as to put in the removable port cover where you put the Sega CD add-on. Wow. So you so but obviously these have no functioning parts to them. They're just there for show. I know. And if you do get if they do ever release the Tower of Power setup, um they will have that available, I would hope. So, we got that. But yeah, it looks just like a perfectly modeled Sega Genesis. Um, on the back here, you got your HDMI your HDMI out and your your um, power cord in. You got your two controller ports on the front. Uh, it feels very sturdy to me. Like, it's, like I felt a few of these uh, consoles from other manufacturers, and they feel very flimsy but this one feels yeah. very very sturdy very well built well as a wise man once said all the best stuff comes from japan <laughs> but yeah this feels really well built i mean it's not i'm not getting any flex flexation or anything no actually even has a little bit of weight to it which is yeah something for one of these systems yeah and hard to believe um you know when you compare it to the original i mean like wow you mean the original you would be able to small table here that we're using. You would probably fill this thing up here. This, you probably fill like five of these on here. We still have some room left over. And what also I like about it is that it doesn't have anything showing like it just looks like the second Genesis. Like we've seen the At Games one that looks sort of like this, but it has the big At Games logo on the bottom. Yeah. But we won't talk much about At Games that's on this. Inferior. Too much. That's 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 the Diet Coke of, of, of um, consoles. Su suffice to say, as we know, this one was made in conjunction with a company called M2 as I mentioned before mm -hmm. on which on my YouTube which on my YouTube I will be mentioning it before this as I mentioned it's made by M2 which cracked the code long ago for Genesis emulation which has always been difficult mm -hmm. but now that we've done the unboxing of this we're gonna hook this thing up and we're actually gonna test out all 42 games so let's get started because we're gonna be in for quite a journey we got going so obviously you get the mm -hmm. your language selection. A little quick note here for those who didn't see the I believe it was Reras. Depending on the language setting, you get different um, a bit different co co covers on there. Game co um, covers, like for example, you get Japanese, you get like the actual Japanese covers of each of the games. Very nice feature. Well, yeah, we'll show that a little yeah. later. So I mean, they got it. Different ways you can sort it out. Release date, A to Z, genre, number of players. I'm going to go with A to Z just because it's going to be easiest to get to our selection of games. Um, like the menu, I like the music. Yeah, definitely a step over the PlayStation Classic and on par with Super Nintendo and NES Classic. So Sega and Nintendo are on par with how they do um, retro consoles. That's how they should be done. Obviously this is going to be your main... Obviously this is the first thing you see when you turn on the system, so you want it to be good. I do like that. I like that it not oh, it doesn't nice. just load the game, it gives you a little yeah. history of the game. Oh yes. So um Nintendo fan here is gonna start us off with the iconic Sonic the Hedgehog. Alrighty. Sonic the Hedgehog. A button. Sonic the Hedgehog, as we oh, all know. We gotta easily the most second popular video game mascot of all time, the first of course being Mario. For those of you who may or already know, Sonic the Hedgehog was considered the, um, kind of the uh, replacement for the old man of, the, of Mario, but, uh, yeah, who's old now? Look at how sharp that looks. Oh, this is a blast from the past. Yeah. No spin dash. This no is, spin dash, yeah. That was really, that was done in two. So. Ironically, I played two before I played one, so I haven't played, I played two more than I have one, so I played... Uh, last time I played one was years ago. I think it was on the GameCube um, release they did with the uh, Sonic Collection. I don't remember that. Um, it sounds great. I mean, the, the music oh God, sounds so really good. perfect. Like, yeah. It's like I'm literally playing. It's like it's back. It's like it's 1991, and here I am playing Sonic the Hedgehog for the very first time, yes. learning about this new game 
uh, for the Sega that's going to take uh, the video game world by storm. Yeah, this was yeah, this was my first uh, Sega game as well. I got this with my Genesis. Mm -hmm. And wow, it's just I'm also liking that I'm not seeing I don't know if it's just because of my TV or anything, but I'm not seeing any kind of like Shimmer, which sometimes does happen with these older games yeah. on modern televisions. Yeah, as far as I can tell. Um, how's the controls feeling? Are they feeling like... <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's, it's a blast from the past. Special Zone! Oh, perfect. It is like, wow. It's like it's nighttime you went all over again. The Council of Wars. <laughs> the Council of Wars are going to definitely be back on track mm -hmm. again. Yep. Kids these days don't know what you're, what you're missing out on. It also, it also seems like it's running really smooth. <laughs> I don't notice any slowdown, any. No. Right, uh, just you, you know, how to hold the start button and go back. To, uh... Okay. Next, we're going to um, go our next game on our list. Uh... Will be Sonic. Will be the sequel to this, which, to a lot of people, including myself, could be better than the original. Mm -hmm. Not only is it a superior sequel in every way. So. Yeah. Not only did it, it was it um better gameplay. I, I think the biggest improvement I find personally for me was they cut the number of stages from three to two, which makes it easier and what less tedious. Another big thing on here was the classic Super Sonic Mom code on here. For those who um may or may don't know, it's there's a sound test code you have to enter. Uh, you have to do two different codes. So I think it's like stage select and sound test code. Uh, I think for me, the biggest innovation yeah. this game offered was the addition of the of the um, spin dash. Ooh, I like that. Spin I've dash, seen definitely. I've seen a lot of uh, clone consoles struggle with doing just the simple transparent effect on the on the shield, but here it looks. That is, yeah. You notice that too. I, one best. I don't think I noticed is that the graphics. Definitely look more crisp than you would expect on a non Sega Genesis emulator emulator game, you know, like with like yeah. games or anything like that. But this is very impressive. Yeah. Yeah, this definitely mm -hmm. And it's just running so smooth, like butter smooth and everything's yeah. responsive. You know, it's unfortunately I have no way I have to Sonic and Knuckles on here so you can use Sonic 2 in here to play as Knuckles in this thing, but I'm trying to special yeah. stage out here. Let's see how Rob is. Maybe he'll do better than I can. Maybe that's just a complete get the necessary um, chaos out here. Yeah, this is definitely... This definitely is working a lot better than anything ad games would do, especially because the controller just feels so much... Per so much perfection is in this controller. I mean... I'm not noticing any kind of... Um, any kind of input problems. I'm not noticing any double inputs. Everything seems to be working just fine and perfect. So, yeah. I mean, I'm doing... Definitely my favorite of all the Sonic games for me. Um, I remember I got mine for free when I got... With yeah. the, it was part of a promotion they had. Yeah. You sent away for it with... Uh, you bought the system with Sonic 1 and you got yeah. Sonic 2 sent to you. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my father's member was playing this at my cousin's house years ago. I had no clue what I was doing, but I got more and more into it. I really started to do my master's game on my own. I kind of was a fan of the Casino Night Zone because I love that theme song. It just seems so cool. Definitely. I think yeah. Casino Night was definitely a huge fan. So, yeah, even though Sonic the Hedgehog wasn't a launch game for the system, it was... Sonic was the per the mascot character. It's what put the Genesis right. on the map. But see, unlike Nintendo, uh, Sega needed didn't have had to try a kind of a couple of times. They didn't just strike gold with the first. Oh, we're going to use Mario, and that's going to work like that. No, they had to try it because the first one technically was Alex Kidd, but Sonic is more iconic. Yeah, we'll get mascot. more. We'll get more Alex Kidd because yeah. that is one of the games. Uh, mm -hmm. I also do like that. Sega did include the ability to just hold down the start button and get to the mm -hmm. get to the menu here. I do like that. Which now, makes sense because technically speaking, if you have the um if you just have a console, it would have to do it like that, only because how would it work? True. Otherwise. Super Nintendo would be just different. You could just press the reset button, boom. Now save. Sonic now this next game, Sonic Spinball, was an interesting title in the fact that it wasn't. It was really a stopgap game for 
between two games. It was really a stopgap game for right. just to keep the fans tied over. I don't know if it was a stopgap between um, two and three or if it was a stopgap between um, three and Sonic CD or Sonic and Knuckles or whatever. Yeah. But kind of like um, like Wind Waker was like the Zelda whole new over game until something until the Twilight Princess came along. Not that I'm saying Wind Waker's bad, it's, gr it's great, but this is a comparison. But what I never understood for, my, for me is the hate. I thought this game was a lot of fun. Maybe because I like pinball. Yeah, and apparently the reason that this game even got made was because, like, Fanboy over here said, the all the games, all the gamers loved the Casino Zone from Sonic 2 so much that they decided that could be a whole game on its own, so... Yeah. Personally, if I would just me, I think if you play this game, you should play Pinball Buzzer by the Who, make it more, make it more fun. Who knows? They might have tried to get that. You know? <laughs> they might have wanted to license at least something on that, but that, not really. Yeah, like eight, like a 16 version of Pinball Buzzer. Yeah, that would be awesome. So it's like a so this is basically like a collectathon type game. You got to go around the stage, you get the different Chaos Emeralds. And then if, once you get all the emeralds in the stage, you fight a boss. Yeah. It's actually interesting because uh, if you played Kirby Pinball or Metroid Prime Pinball, um, having both is a great game with fun games. This is much, much different. The premise is the same with the pinball, but it's more unique. You're not just limited to one screen or one... You're, you know, it's constantly changing. It makes it more unique. Which is pretty cool. I definitely, I had this game too, and I I played the hell out of this. I love this game. Yeah, and again, for me, when I had that game through Sonic Collection that came out back in the early 2000s, I love this game so, so much. Excuse us. Yeah, I'm just one second. It's my daughter's, my daughter's phone just went off. I gotta get this, uh... All right. Well, that's Sonic Spinball for us here. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's <laughs> dead, Jim. Um. So next game on the list is so now we've gone over the mascot games. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get the. We're gonna start doing the launch titles. Yep. That so there were so four of the games on here are launch titles. These were launched with the game, and the first one we're gonna take a look at is Space Harrier Two. Space Harrier 2, released back in 89, a celebrated launch title for the Genesis Mini Drive. It's basically a sequel to the pop of 3D shoot 'em up. You get to take Harry to the sky once more to defend Fantasyland from a mysterious invader. Now, again, this was before the mascot games. This was well before, before the, Sonic yep. came out long. Yep. Wow, we were only four when it came out. Let's see, let's try something fun. Ooh, here we go. Copper Hill? Ooh. Pyramid theme. Fall Pyramid. Curious. Reminds me of the, um... Let's see, the parts in, um... Super Star Wars, um... Oh, I know what you're talking about, but like, Lance Yeah, the Lance Beater stage, you know, the parts where you're, like, using the Lance Beater, or the, um... Um... Now, I will say this is, crawler, and I'm dead. Now I will say this is definitely not a get ready. This is definitely I mean the voice samples are good and the music's great, but graphically this is not really a good sam a good example of yeah. Sega Genesis power. No. This no. But then again, it'd be kinda like um Super Nintendo Classic you're you 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 play you play Super Mario World Super Match for Link to the Past. Get ready. And then you're playing like um I like just think that game. I just think that certain yeah. other Space Harrier games on other systems ran a lot smoother than they than this. I mean, this seems to be very choppy and everything. Yeah. But I wonder if it's, maybe this was the most popular one, or just like there was like a chance. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, a little tricky though. To be honest, I'm used to sh to uh, shooters, side-scrolling shooters. As opposed to the um to these kind these kind of kind though right. so it's a little bit tricky on here. But we're um, gonna go to a different launch game now. Now this launch game separated the boys from the men. Really? Yeah. Oh, you didn't you hit the wrong. Yeah, I still get used to this whole thing. This yeah. um lovely thing. So this next game will this next game separated the boys from the men and went took hardness to a whole new level. Oh yeah, that's what it was designed to do. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Everyone remembers Ghosts and Goblins from the NES, mm-hmm. and then Sega, of course, did. Well, Capcom gave the next gave. Actually, there were two 16-bit versions. A lot of people like this one better mm-hmm. than the Super Nintendo version because you get the ability to shoot up in this. Yeah. And for those of you who say, oh, Dark Side, but Dark Side's being hard, no, 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 no. That's for kids. This is a real man's game right here. This, this is Dark Side before. Oh, push start and let's show yeah. it off there. Yeah, this is before. So, yeah. As Wise Man once said, this game's cast me you can buy Mega Man to Mega Man. That's a difficult level right there. And, and like more, I said, it may, oh, yeah. but supposedly the Sega Genesis version is a little easier because you can you can shoot up and everything. So, so I know there were a couple of times in um the NES version where I'm like shooting up would have made it a lot easier. Oh, and the NES version if that were possible. But at the time it was it was limited what you could do at that time. But still, it was quite fun. It is really nostalgic when you're playing this game. Wow. I mean, I actually am doing better than I used to on the NES, the NES version. <laughs> this would probably be like one of the... Yeah. Oh. And now I jinx myself, as you probably can see. Oh. And, now I'm, and there I am. I'm Yamcha. Get the knife. Get the knife. Get the knife. Yep. <laughs> remember the... Get the knife. Remember the three... Get the knife. Remember the three rules. Get the knife. Get the knife. Get the knife. Yeah. A lightsaber. A sword. A sword. A sword. Now, obviously not the best weapon to use in this game, but it's clearly the, the short range, you don't want to use it. I think but the short fun. range makes it go a little faster, like you can swing it a little faster than you can shoot. Uh, yeah. It seems to be pretty good, although it could work better for you if you're not confident with long range things. For a short range attack, you're used to playing like At Zelda. least it could be good until you get the knife. Get the knife. Get the knife. That's what you want. Get the knife. Get the knife. You'll get the knife. Yeah. Oh, I don't get the flame on the next level, but that's not for like, later in the game. I wonder if that's still happening in this. Like, I've never really... I'll be honest, I never got into these ones too much, so... Yep. <laughs> right, let me get to the next one. Alrighty. Um, and next one we got on our list is... So next we're going to go with another launch title. Now, a lot of early Sega Genesis systems actually came with this as a built-in title, and it is... The beginning is obviously iconic. I mean, everyone makes fun of the... Infamous. Live from your grave. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, altered beast. What a. I I had no other way to describe it. And it's just weird. <laughs> it's definitely a unique, uh, unique yeah. specimen of the game. It's like a. It's like a. a kind of like. Final. Not final fight. Um. But I mean, you also gotta remember that this was, that part of what the Genesis was trying to do was really stick it to Nintendo and show people, you know, you're gonna get the same quality that we gave, that we give in the arcade with our new Genesis system. Yeah. Something you don't, you won't typically get from Nintendo. Yeah, but once the Super NES came out, and then people were like, oh wow, what do we do? Which system do we go with? Could... I was lucky. My neighbors had the, uh... Welcome to your... I was really lucky. My neighbors had the Super Nintendo, so I could just go over and play some Super Nintendo games on theirs. And my cousin, I used to spend the night at his house all the time, and he had one, a Super Nintendo. I actually was able to beat the, um, original Super Star Wars that way. Oh, man. Those are... That is a fun trilogy of games with the Super Star Wars trilogy Super Nintendo. You cannot go wrong with this game. They definitely, uh, yeah. they were definitely hard. I mean, there's no two ways about I mean, it. With the exception of the Rogue Squadron games for the N64 and the GameCube, I would, if it wasn't for those games, I would consider the Super Star Wars trilogy the greatest Star Wars game ever created. I mean, yeah, you got Shells of the Empire. But, yeah. I mean... Right. I mean that. Pretty straightforward, you know all this. Yeah, it's all just your classic. Yeah, yeah, it's just your typical side-scrolling yeah. action. Oh, nice. Yeah. That bad for a game that came out 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go. So now we're gonna. So now, as a, as fanboy here had mentioned, we're gonna look at what was originally slated to be the mascot character 
uh, for the Sega brand mm -hmm. before they came up with Sonic. Yeah. And that would be Alex Kidd. Similar to, like, you could say in a way, like Donkey Kong, when he came out in 1980 with Mario. Yeah, he's still an iconic character, but Mario is the iconic, is the icon of the <laughs> Wow. Okay, I have to be honest with you, I've heard of this game, I have no clue what the heck to do. <laughs> uh, I don't think I do either. I just thought, like, what the... It kind of, like, reminds me of... But at least, at least from what I understand, this one, you don't have to... You don't have to play rock, paper, scissors to continue yeah. on. What was that game they showed in EVG on? The um, one where the kids shoot the bubbles? I think that was three. I'm not sure. Remember that game? Remember they showed that? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. What, it kind of reminds me of that combined with Mega Man. This game right here. That's what that reminds me of. But this was meant to be the uh, mascot character for the system, for the whole Sega brand. And obviously, I mean, he was... Alex Kidd was a big game for the Master System, but Nintendo kind of dominated the 8-bit era with the NES. I mean, there's no two yeah. ways about it. I mean, if it was Mario, it was Zelda. If it was Zelda, it was... Metroid well, everyone I knew had an NES. Nobody I ever knew had a Master System. Yeah, I never. It's funny. I never. Heard I never. Of yeah, I'm, I'm with you. The first Sega Gen. The first Sega thing I ever heard of was the Genesis. Yeah. Not the Master System. I never heard of that. I don't think anyone I, even talked about the Master. Yeah, system. at first I'm thinking when, we, when people say Master System, oh, I'm thinking, oh, oh we mean the Genesis. Like, no, 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 Master System. What's the Master System? Exactly. Yeah, but you know. Well, we got a lot more games to go, so now we're going to get into some of the two-player action that... Yeah, Golden Axe, that's a game I have not played in a long time. Classic game right there. I had I had this one, me and my buddies had a lot of fun with this. It feels bigger than, than it used to this controller. Oh, hang on a <laughs> second. Oh, oh hang on, oh. it's uh... It's arcade style, you got, you're going to have to press start. Ah, uh, okay. So it's, I think it's arcade style. I think you gotta press start. There we go. Oh, that's weird. So it's arcade style. So who did you always like to be? I always like to be the axe wielder. I was a sword guy, personally. Okay. Press start, and we'll get to it. Yeah. So you used to them starting automatically. That's what we get to. Alrighty, so. Golden Axe. I remember, I haven't played this game in years. Just use your magic. Yeah. Again, good beat, good beat em up though. I mean, it it really was what a beat em up was. Oh, I think okay, we might friendly fire. <laughs> okay, maybe there's a um, mode or something that we're not that we don't do that to each other. Probably, yeah. We just set it up, but we're not here to not like Battle Toads. We're not here to actually. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's a lot easier than Battle Toads. <laughs> exactly. We're we're not here to actually play these games. We're just showing off, you know, what's on the system and oh, get him, get him. I always thought this thing was a squirrel, not like a little. Thief. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can see that. I always thought that thing was a squirrel. Oh, that would have been a per. If they ever made this into a movie, he'd be a per. He would have been a perfect. Uh... You want to go up? I'll take down. That's okay. I'll do that. I have. It's over now. I have the high ground. <laughs> I bet you jerk. favorite games for the system, honestly. I used to love playing this. <laughs> Get it. Watch out for the big dudes. Yeah, the uh, weird uh, hammer guys. Let them... Oh, you got them. Nice. Get your two back first. Oh man, 
course, it went off screen. Oh, that happened. The story mode was really good on this, too, so I thought, I think it's a really good one. But, later games in this, later games in the Genesis that were two-player games really up the attitude factor, and we're going to take a look oh, yeah. at one of those now. Oh, damn it, Earl. What a weird game, but it was a weird, but it was cool kind of weird. Well, it was something yeah. no one had ever seen know. before. And, of course, the iconic music still gets me to this day, I mean... I mean, they give you the story, but... I like that you get the random world so that you can get anything you want. There's our map. You just gotta reorient yourself to the controls. <laughs> I... This, no, I heard this game. I heard it was a really great game. It is kind of it is cool. I'm not gonna not deny that. I had never. This is the first time I've ever played this. Yeah, I really liked. Um, I was big into number two myself. A lot of people don't like that one too much, but I really did enjoy uh, number two. I think this is a great co-op game though, and supposedly you don't. You can go into different directions, and it'll like split screen when you're far enough away from each other. And then it'll like rejoin back in, which was very something you didn't really see too much. Yeah. You didn't see that in a lot of games. It was always either, it was always like straight up split screen or you had to stay on the same space. But I mean, mm -hmm. you got to down I think here. there was a. But hidden... I mean, like you could go off to the right and explore that way, and I could go up. And we could. See? And then we get close enough together. Right, cool. but watch out for the devil. The devil's always bad. He has a bug. Yeah, this is a fun game to have. Like, <laughs> it's so weird and bizarre. The fact that it's all randomized and all that. What makes this game really tough is you don't have an attack. Like, I think you might get an attack later, but you really don't have an attack function. Yeah, this is a really fun game. And again, it's running butter smooth on this thing. Yeah. It looks, <laughs> it's running great, it so looks weird. good, and you know, I'm definitely excited about it. Um, I actually, I've tried playing this game several times, but it's never really stuck with me. But I definitely do plan on trying it out later. Okay. Decoy. Toe Jam and Earl, so we'll go to the we'll go to our next two player game, which is one of the games that a lot of people I know had and a lot of people I that played this really enjoyed it. Yep. Um, it has some of the best music of the system oh, yeah. in my opinion. Some of the most iconic iconic stuff. Mm-hmm. Streets of Rage. Basically, um kinda of like a final like Sega's answer to final fight. Both great games. Yeah. Axel, yeah. You like Axel? Oh, no, no, I was saying, I keep thinking, I think of Axel, I immediately think of, uh... Um, Beverly Hills Cop. No, 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 no Be Be Beverly Hills Cop. Um, like, Terry Bogart from King of Fighters. Or, um, what's that one guy? Like, um, not Guy. I think it's a guy from it's, Final Fight? I think it's Guy. Yeah, like Guy from Final Fight, who's also a Street Fighter. But yeah. So he does that move. Yeah, it's a really cool version of Street Fighter. Final Fight or Streets of Rage or Switch Rage. Now I think it's I think it's definitely important that they did have Oh oh my bad. <laughs> I think it's definitely I think it's definitely important that they had this game on here. Uh, just because it was so iconic to the system. Oh yeah, again, Final Fight, great beat up great, you know, uh Sats won't beat them up time style game. Well it's it's double dragon was the one that kind of started. You could see started it all. Yeah, I would. I would give you that. Yeah, Double Dragon, Double Dragon the cl classic beat 'em up shooter, a uh, uh, classic beat 'em up game. See, button masher. Yeah. 
Without that game, you wouldn't have Streets of Rage, you'd have Final Fight. But then this music, yeah. man, it just, the oh, music yeah. just... Yeah. It's just a simple beat of a button smith masher, but it is fun as hell. You get a good one like this, whether it's Final, Final Fight, Streets of Rage, you are set for life, man. You are set. Yeah, this is... We're, we lost him on the... I think you're off camera here. Can move over some. Oh, how about that? There we are. There we go, people. Sorry. But we lost you there for a minute. Yeah. This is my first time... This is my first time doing a two-person show like this, so... Whoops. Sorry. I can argue it's a hate crime, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so you know. <laughs> Man, this game... Definitely define the 90s. Oh like. my god. Yeah. Street, I think all I think the 90s were fighters and beat em up style. Yeah, they had some side scrollers fun games, some, some fun side scrollers, but beat em up style games. Well, this is definitely something that set Sega apart from Nintendo, too, was they were they were banking on the fact that people who played the Nintendo were actually kind of growing up a little bit and getting into more of the more adult oriented and adult themed game so now we get things like people using knives like this but even but even some of this got censored back in the day Sega Sega was known to push the envelope but not break the envelope yeah unfortunately Midway um, when Mortal Kombat came out in 92 and that well we all know the story about that yeah. but who heard you know that literally changed gaming. I mean, I don't know that I call. I don't know that I call that necessarily a bad thing. I don't, honest. I say it's a bad thing. I mean, I just the way the way with the issue with, with the rating system now. I no, no, I don't mean to say, I ever say that's a bad thing. I say change games because now it's the rating system now. When we how the rate, and in a way, I think it's kind of a good thing. But it just goes to show you how sometimes Nintendo needs a. Keep their mouth shut, because remember Howard Lincoln always said that Night Trap would never appear on a Nintendo system, but it's on the Switch. Yeah, it's also more ironic though that Sony is basically going with their censorship policies, while Nintendo's like, yeah, we don't care. It's it's reversed from the 90s, but the big difference between Nintendo and Sony back in the 90s, Nintendo was arguably Nintendo under pressure from parents and the government. And there wasn't much media outlet back then. Well, shoot, there. we gotta get to our next game, because we're, oh. we're getting so into this, and yeah. we're talking about the good old days. <laughs> yeah. Next is... Yeah. Next is gonna be one of the licensed games that, frankly, I was surprised when I heard about it. Me too. Because I didn't know of any way they were gonna get, like, big, like, yeah. Disney games on here like this. Yeah. It was a shock. But, just to finish up my point real quick, I don't want to bail on forever. Nintendo was under pressure from the government and parents. That was in the 90s, and the media, media outlet back then was nothing compared to today. Nowadays, well, Nintendo's kind of do the opposite. They're like, yeah, we don't care. If it's, if it's, if it's third party, we do what you want. We don't care. You want to be Mickey or Donald? Oh, I don't know. Oh, whoever. It doesn't matter. I can't, I'll, be, I'll be Donald. I'm not Donald. I'm so Mickey. <laughs> he was funny as hell. That doesn't matter. It's good. Though. So, yeah. I've heard of these games, but I've never, this is the first time I've ever played any of these games. Yeah. Now I will say this, Disney games on the Genesis had great, like, animation details and everything. You almost, you almost felt like you were, it definitely had a Disney feel to it. This was definitely. I mean, this was definitely showcasing what Disney was capable of. Just go on, man. That's <laughs> so funny. It doesn't do this any split screen. Oh, we have to go up there. That's cool.
get up on the leaf or something? Maybe you gotta push something down? That we can always use the uh, go to gamefacts.com and figure that one out. Yeah, but I mean, we're not really here to play <laughs> yeah. the game. We're just here to kind of display what it is. Now, a lot of people, and I know me personally, I also never played World of Illusion. I mostly played this next one we're going to take a look at, which was to me one of the best Disney games on the, on the Sega Genesis. That's Castle of Illusion. Um, and just like with the previous one, I've never played this game before as well. I mean, it's it's interesting to note that they did do a remake of this game, yeah. too, which you no longer can get. That's what happens with digital stuff, but, I mean... Is it just me or does this me of the Berenstein Bears game for the Genesis? It could be the similar vein, but... Wait, it's, 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 it's Steam or Steam? <laughs> well, which, 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 which universe are we in? I don't know. I think we're in the Steam universe. Bloodstain? <laughs> I hope not the Bloodstain, otherwise we're in trouble. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, the controls are definitely wow. working smoothly on this. This is really nice. It's a yeah. nice, simple, simple size scroller game, Disney game, which is great. Although... Um, I know it's not on here, but the, I remember playing Disney's Aladdin, both Genesis and Sega, and Sega which, is, get, which yes. is getting released on modern consoles. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> Probably why it's not on here. Yeah. Unless you might hit him. But yeah. Well, but it'll, yeah. It'll probably it will. <laughs> give it time. I mean, I'm sure the modders are already working on it that already got this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really straightforward, simple scroller. Really nice. Yeah. yeah, I used to play the hell out of this game, so... Oh, no! Oh, no! Well, next will be, um... Next, we're gonna have my friend... We're gonna have, uh... Fanboy here to take us through a couple of Treasure games. Yeah. Now, Treasure was a very unique publisher, but I'm dying my head. He's up, up to the corner. Remember, we're in ABC order. Right here we yeah. go. And they were known for being very unique with their games, so. Dying my head. Release date 25 years ago, 1994. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, it's a Treasure game. So I mean, this is this was always an interesting type of game here. Not a lot of love for this kind of game, for this game yet. This, along with Decap Attack and the next one we're gonna be taking a look at, really push push the Genesis and are really good. I mean, I think that we're gonna. See I think we're seeing the... Are you controlling it or is it just... Oh, yeah, you can control it. Use your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's using your head. Rather odds for type of shoulder, but it's fun. Yeah, push right in the middle of the, of the, middle of the thick of this stuff. Funny they do that. Oh, now are we like weird? Oh, that can't be good. Watch out. Hey, they're just oh, oh. try it. Head, you got hit. Should've gone for the head. Oh, could've been worse. I like the six fingers. 
Well, now this is an interesting game, but the, yeah. <laughs> but the next game we're going to take a look at is yep. one of the more expensive hitters on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, well, because Bad I'm Kitty, Dunst, T Dunst, and Hot Hot Hot. So let's go to the next game, which is definitely very Contra like, because, and that's for a good reason, because a lot of the people. It was one more. So a lot of people that left, uh, that left Konami formed Treasure. And this was one of the games they created with it. And again, this game is very rare. So its inclusion on the Genesis class, on this Genesis Mini, uh, definitely adds a lot to the, a lot of value to the system. I'm liking this already. I even started the game and I'm already I'm loving this thing. Oh, that's a vertical level. Oh, even whoa. Hey, oh, perfect. You can shoot all sorts of angles. I like that. I like Contra that. Contra style. Well, I told you, the people yeah. who left uh, Konami yeah, to like form that. treasure, yeah. this is where they came from. It's like came Contra from. Light, so to speak. It's like a contra, contra for kids. <laughs> I don't know, I've heard that this game can be pretty challenging. Oh, I meant the way that the time was. Not so much a challenge, I mean, let's be honest though. But, I mean, this is definitely... Well, like I said, this game uh, currently on the... It's funny, see these types of games here. This game right here for us is easy. Game for kids, if you will, you know, for kids nowadays, it's too difficult. Now keep in mind, this system costs eighty dollars, and a copy of the Genesis version of Gunstar Heroes Loose is currently currently running around forty-two of that. Yeah. So right there, you're caught. You're talking about more than half the cost. Hey, Clueless, thanks for. Uh, we're definitely having a lot of fun doing this. It's definitely definitely an experience. I'm loving this system. I think this may be. I think this is a very well done little yeah. classic console. Alright, uh, what's next on our list? Well, next we're going to take a little break. Turn, next we're taking a little break because we've done the first 14 games, so we're a third of the way done already. And now I'm going to show some of the other things on the, on the menu here. So, obviously, we're talking about some of the settings you can do. So... Screen settings, you can do one of two things. You could do standard 4x3, or you could do widescreen, which, to be honest with you, you should never do, Yeah. but I'll show it off anyway. Yeah, I mean, we was complaining about that. Like, well, I, I mean, these games were never made for exactly. this. So, like, exactly, exactly. Here's how Sonic 1 looks when you stretch it out Sega. fully to 16x9. <sighs> Oh, you'll see it. It's not. I mean, I'm... It's some pe for some people, it's it's something some people would like. <laughs> Imagine on the big screen TV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people might actually prefer playing it like this, but it literally just takes the 4x3 image and stretches it heavily out. So, you know, you don't get yeah. the... So you get that stretch. And then... Um, I'm just going to save it here to show the next one of the other features on here. So yeah, one of the other features, one of the other filters which you probably should never use is the so you'll definitely want to keep it on that, but then they have a CRT filter which basically creates like a CRT style, but they make it it makes the screen like look at how dark it makes the screen, but it does definitely do that softer, you know, CRT styling that we probably would have grown up with on this. But as dark as it makes the screen, it, I mean, Nintendo has, you know, CRT filters on their classic consoles, and they don't do this to the, to the screen, so. Nintendo does, Genesis don't. <laughs> so this probably, 
this will most definitely be the last time I do I have it on I have the CRT filter on because I prefer my pick I mean this is great if people like their pixels you know muted and they want more of the classic experience that they used to have growing up but I prefer my pixels nice and sharp and crisp same here so I prefer to see the pixels looking really clear and what I would have imagined they would have looked like back in the day now so those are the screen settings and I'm gonna take the CRT filter off now we got you see we got the one wallpaper on there you can have the regular you have a like stage wallpaper or you can have just a black background Kind of the speaker setup, personally. That's just not a lot of choices on the backgrounds, uh, but we'll play the next set of games with that background. Yeah. Now, one thing that's really cool that kind that um, Nintendo fanboy here kind of stumbled on, but I'm going to show off right now. You see how we got the um, boxes showing the front of the cases? Well, if you want to change that up, you could get like a side view. This is how you would have seen the games on the shelf. Yeah. And this will actually show you all 42 games in one screen instead of having to flick through a lot of them. Really? So cool. if you just want to really quickly find one of the games that you're looking for. Yep, just turn your head sideways so you can look better look at the title. <laughs> you know. It's like you the old days. But it's just one, it's just touching the B button and you get that. Yep. So now, um, next game, on, we're going to get back to the games now. And we're gonna go with an EA game, Road Rash 2. Um, it's before EA was before EA was to turn to the dark side. This is actually the good days. Yeah, there were good times. EA. This is a game I've never really gotten into. Yeah. So B is to go. And you know, on the Genesis, I mean, the music's great, but the I don't know. I guess it's a little choppy. It doesn't run quite as smooth as. I'd like it to personally. Grab this idea, man. That's how the game was designed. I'm guessing. Only Ryan more so for that easy in real life. <laughs> yeah, so this is the this is Road Rash, which is definitely appropriate. Yeah. Now you do maintain some control over your guy as he goes back to getting his bike. That's one of the interesting things. I mean, Nintendo was known for their. Nintendo had a share of racers on the N60, on the Super, on the both the Super and the regular Nintendo. But they had nothing like this. I mean, this had the rolling hills. I mean, yeah, and Super Nintendo could do some of this with their Mode 7 stuff, similar stuff similar to this. I'd argue, I'd say that I think the Mode 7 racing style kind of looks a lot better than this, to be honest. Uh, I definitely think on this particular style of game, Nintendo won out. I or agree. Definitely yeah. won out over Sega. Yeah. Not to mention their races would have more originality with F Zero for starters, Mario Kart. But so now, Derek, pick up that controller, because now we're going into a. Now we're going to get into a fighting mode. Yep. Unfortunately, they I gave do. you three fighting games on here, and we're gonna start with what I think might be the worst of the bunch. I mean, let's just say that the worst fighting game of all time. It is unique, like I guess. I mean, first I went before Mortal Kombat to over Virtual Fighter. Too. I know. I mean, I was never really big on Virtual Fighter, but I mean, the big thing with this was it was a 3D game and. This is definitely not. Are we in the Matrix or something? <laughs> yeah, the moon physics. Yeah. Yeah, like what the hell? Wow. I mean, I played lots of 2D Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and so forth, but wow. What? Uh, you won that. I you did. Got that. Yeah, you got you got the point up okay, there. Okay, good. I thought we both got out. Yeah, you got, oh, you got the God. point there. I think it's because you. I think it's because you jumped out, but you hit me first. <laughs> yeah, but that's another thing that this game does. That's kind of. Yeah, like like we're, we're, we're fighting on the moon. <laughs> we're to fight more like moon fighter. I'm pretty sure that this would be better if you had the six button controller, which other regions did get out of the box. But like I said, Epic Do's got Epic Do's got one coming out. I don't know if Epic Do, Epic Do, whatever. But 
They've got one coming out that's a six button. It's supposed to be very comfortable to hold. Oh. I'll be doing a review on that, but that's Virtua lot. Fighter, Virtua Fighter 2. Eh. There are better games that could have been on the system. Oh, hang Again, on here. Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, or like a bunch of other games. They could have put Musha on there instead of this, which yeah. would have been. But I might give you a variety of fighters, but put a fighter on people with wands. Yeah, and then they give us too much to ask. Eternal Champions. This is better than Virtual Fighter. Well, yeah, it was desi designed to sell the Activator. Remember the Activator unit? That was a weird add on. But then again, you know. Taylor it has sheer weird add-ons, but hey, most of them were awesome. Most of them, most of them were actually worth it. Not the power glove. The power it was an idea, but I don't think it was it was not properly done. I mean, we no one could do. We couldn't do like the two-player, the motion-controlled sensing stuff like we do now. So, so I could be some freaky fish guy. Ooh, Xavier, not that, not that Xavier though. <laughs> That could be fun. Yeah. Or Xavier, but not that Xavier, which is kind of the bottom. down. It's definitely fast. I gotta give it that. Okay, yeah. It's got speed. And I never heard, up until they mentioned on the, um, the, the um, YouTube channels where they were talking about the uh, release of the Sega Mini, I never heard of this game. It's, but it's fun. Yeah, it's definitely more, it's, it's the, But again, like, you, look, yeah. you notice this, like, see how I'm punching right now? You gotta press, if you press start, you go into kicks. So you gotta constantly be switching between punching and kicking by pressing the start button. Again, yeah. if you're using the three button controller and right. not the six button. Well, yeah, that's why if you can, get a six button controller as soon as you can. There's an eight, there's a wireless version online on Amazon, which is, you can pre-order it for $25. Um, yeah, or you can get, um, if you want to stick with wired controllers, Retrobit also has some, uh, Six button controllers for both the Saturn and the Gen and the Genesis that actually do work on the Mini, and they come in both Bluetooth and wired models. And you could def and you can uh, those are licensed because Retrobit did enter into a partnership with Sega, so those are actually licensed by yeah. Sega as well. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could definitely do that. Yeah, I mean, all in all, this is a fairly straightforward fighting game. It's better than Virtual Fighter 2, it's more faster. It's kind of like... But obviously, yeah. for fighters, this would not be something you think of when you think of the Genesis. If you're not talking Mortal Kombat, there's one fighting game you're talking about. The King of Fighters. Well, no, not the King of Fighters, but... Really? What do you think the greatest fighting of all time is? I don't know, but it's not King of Fighters. No, no, no. This is, no, no. Not King of Fighters is the title. Yeah. This is the king, the, the, the great, the, the um, ahead, best, no. best of fighters. Can we agree you? I'll be with you. My boy, Guile. And by the way, that's not a tattoo. That's a birthmark. Yeah. And not King of Fighters. This is considered the greatest fighting. I would put this as the greatest fighting of all time. Ultimate gets his great. What's about Street Fighter 2? Again, just like with, um, and again, just like with Eternal Champions, you gotta press start to switch between punches and attack. Punches and kicks. Great button masher action. Yes! <laughs> Double knockout! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I oh, won! Come on. Oh, come on! You know why I won? Because I'm because because he's no he won because he's American. <laughs> no, America, right there. <laughs> America. Yeah. 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 And remember, not remember. And Guile. Just remember another thing. Guile is so powerful. His base form is Super Saiyan three. It's true. That's how powerful he is. Oh, it's damn true. Oh. <laughs> This is. Looks like you'd be a fire this time. Yeah. Wow, that was weird. You got dizzy like that. But yeah, Street Fighter 2, any version of it is, is always going to be good. So pr props to Sega for including this on there. Well, they'd have a lot of questions if they didn't include that <laughs> fighter but or Mortal Kombat. I mean, you have to include one or the other. Now, we're going to tone things down a little bit and play a little game that, you know, while it's not 
a huge Sega Genesis seller. I think it actually had a better soundtrack on the Sega mm -hmm. CD. It definitely shows off some of what the Genesis could do, and yeah. Nintendo really couldn't get these kind of, like, yeah. at yes. the time, realistic graphics like this. See, this was definitely in my top ten list of favorite Genesis games. Maybe top five? No, no, definitely top ten. Outside of Sonic, Earthworm Jim, this, I just, this music alone is great. I love the graphics. It's so simple. I come from Smash. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, it wouldn't work, though. But, I mean, this game was definitely... It's definitely one that I'm not too familiar with how to play, but I definitely... But now that I actually... But I never really had this growing up. Now that I've actually got it on this, I might actually... Oh, yeah. You, you'll like it. It's really fun. I might actually give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. See? And notice that... Another thing to point out... You notice that we have Echo here. Where, where's Aquaman? Doesn't matter. He's useless. Forget Aquaman. He's worthless. Aqua who? Exactly. No, wait. Aquaman's worthless, so yeah. I don't want to be Aquaman. He sucks. Aquaman is, is just Jar Jar Binks of the, the DC universe. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have the fanboys are gonna be calling that out. Yeah, look it over it. They know it's true. Um, but yeah, this game's definitely got good physics. I oh, think yeah. it's got good control and good physics, and I think it's definitely <laughs> worth um. I think it's definitely a worthy addition to this. It's definitely one of the weirder. One of the more unique additions, but I think it's definitely it's something you have to put on these things because you've got to show off uh, what the Genesis was capable of back in the day. Genesis does. Yeah, and this was one of the things. I mean, Genesis really pushed that they could do. I mean, almost 3D graphics better than Nintendo could. I mean, when you see Echo, you can turn them all in different directions, and it's all fluid and definitely good. Blast processing, man. <laughs> one thing I, one game I think they could have done, maybe that I would have liked to see, maybe instead of Echo, would be like any of the Strike games, like Desert Strike, Jungle Strike. Yeah. It still showed off some of the unique power of the Genesis, but you still got the, you know, it was just a better, more action-oriented game. So I think that's definitely something we could have seen more definitely of. Definitely a fun game, though, Echo. I, I, it's I, definitely, I just love it. It's definitely one I'm going to get more into eventually. Next, uh, this was one of the games that you know Sega used to define their attitude. It was the, okay. you know, it was the tood of Gen Sega. Real quick, I want to point out, I love two things. One, I love this game. And second, this is my third choice for a DLC character. Earthworm Jim being three, two being Dante, one being Crash Bandicoot. I want to see all three of those characters in Smash Bros. Earthworm, Earthworm Jim and Smash Bros. would be very that interesting. That would be freaking awesome. Can you imagine using Earthworm Jim versus... Mario or Sonic no, or something? Versus Samus? <laughs> oh, that man. would be interesting. That would be the greatest space battle ever. Earthworm Jim. What's, what can you say about Earthworm Jim? It's awesome. Nothing. Like recently, no, it's the great. It but again, awesome. and again, the smooth animation. I mean, Super Nintendo. This did also come to the Super Nintendo. I mean, it's gonna be. It's mm -hmm. arguable which is better. I would say the Genesis is better because the I can, because you know why the music. I like the music. I, can, I prefer the music in this version better. There we go. Yeah. The cow took over the moon. The music definitely. I mean, Sega definitely had its had the sound quality in a lot of their games. I mean, it wasn't too often you saw Sega games and Super and Sega and Super Nintendo getting the same game. So Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, or Throne Gym. Yeah, but even but, Street yeah. Fighter had was different. I mean, Street yeah. Fighter, you had Street Fighter Two for the Super Nintendo, but then Street Fighter for the Genesis was Special Champion Edition, so yeah. it added the ability yeah. to play as the bosses. And the... Yeah, so in my opinion, so for me, this is the only time I'm going to say Sega was better. Nintendo. But then Nintendo yeah. came back with Street Fu Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and all that other stuff, so... Yeah. I mean, you could You could go through a whole, like... You do a whole series on... 
the Street Fighter franchise with differences in... Oi. Oh, that that would that be the most conf oh, wow. How how would you, it'd be like so confusing to do? Well, I mean, you could compare different Street Fighter <laughs> two versions together. Yeah. So I mean, that's... yeah. Oh, evil little fire. Oh well. But yeah. Like I said, love this game. It is fun as hell. Definitely I mean, a worthy addition to the Sega, to the Sega Genesis class, to the Sega Mini. I mean, I was like in, in, in giddy like sco giddy like a schoolboy when they announced this. Like, yay! I love this game. I'm so happy they brought it in there. It was like awesome. Oh yeah! Like, perfectly. So all in all, just as awesome as it was when it first came out. All right. Um, next, we're gonna go to another interesting game. Yeah. And Fanboy here is going to review that one. Um, it's going to be, it's an interesting one that's, again, really overlooked, but I think it really, it's up, no, not back, not, not back, not back, comic zone. This was a different type of game, I mean, yeah. we all like, every kid back in the 90s loved their comic books, Spider-Man and everything, that's this was the first game that basically was so like, this <laughs> game. but this game Best was like, ever. you're a comic book writer and yeah. drawer, going in. and this is one of those games that always, that at game seems to always have a problem emulating. Uh-huh. It was, I, see, this is another game right here, I played it, I didn't understand what I was doing, all I know is, but it was so much fun. You know what it reminds me of? I know it's based on comic book characters, but it gives you more of an image comics vibe. The base based on the design in there. I wonder if it was done great by the characters from image comics. Yeah. Like that. But yeah, maybe like Jim Lee. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be great to find out that Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane had something involved in this thing. Yeah. I mean, some of the visual things, like how he's going from panel to panel, how yeah. the main villains drawing in the enemies as you're as you're beating them here I mean it definitely it's definitely unique in the in the comic book genre that you're fighting in an actual comic book I definitely think that I definitely think it got overlooked a lot I mean I've always liked it yeah I never was able to get my hands on it and then there's that which gives you a lot of replayability and you know, figuring out what to do, where to go next. Mm -hmm. Now, this is definitely why original style of video game right here. I mean, how many games do you think of literally look like this? You really can't think of one. It's just really cool how they did this. Yeah, it yeah. really is something. I'm surprised. Was there ever a sequel? Was there a sequel? No, there was, was ne it? there was never a sequel. This was just a one-off, one-off, one-and-done game. Unfortunately, that's a shame. Because I, I can see this game being a sequel, worthy of a sequel. Well, I mean, maybe we could get a remake or a remaster, or maybe just a refresh of the reboot of the series, or yeah. some of these ideas. You know, there's a big push for 2D games right now. Yeah. I think this would definitely, this would definitely fit a need to satisfy both the 2D genre lovers and comic book lovers. Oh uh, yeah, I love, I love this game already. It's just so cool. So is this one you're definitely gonna get? That's definitely gonna get a lot of play time on your um. Oh yeah, I yeah, uh, I, I think so too. So I had fun with my my comic nostalgia. I'll just go and read my more comics later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, all in all, it's fun. It gives more of the image comics feel because having read like you know, the Young Blood Spawn, I would not be surprised, and I would hope to find out. I don't know if it's not true. It was spun down by Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee. Now this was interesting when you back in the day when you could shoot the Sega logo. And... <laughs> yeah, as, this, as you can see here, we are reviewing Vector Man, which what I would consider the Mega Man of Sega Genesis games. Yeah, I mean, and, and that, I, by that I mean it's pretty freaking awesome. I also think it real it was another one of those games designed to really show off the three D capabilities of the Genesis, how it could handle, you know, more complex shapes. Instead of everything just being a circle, you could definitely see shading and spherical things. It is this 
it's really cool the graphics on here. Last processing. It's just really cool. It gives kind of like a 3D-ish effect in a way. You no, know, it's all about you know, shading and stuff, which Nintendo didn't really get into too much until um, Rare came along with their Donkey Kong Country games. Oh yeah, that, yeah. But yeah, but to be fair though, you know, they a lot of they, some of their games didn't even do that. I mean, look at Super Mario and Link to the Past. Those games came out almost 30 years ago, and to this day, they are still goats of games. They're still considered easily top 10 of all time, if you bring the great few games. Definitely. Yeah. Like, I asked Super Mario this the other this is not long ago. It was. It's like it's just so much fun. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not. I mean, we've gone through I'm thinking we've gone through almost half the games on this thing, and I have not noticed any kind of input glitches. You know, every yeah. every at least not in the game. Now in the menu, I've noticed, but not in game, which is where it really counts. Yeah, I mean the menu. You, 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 it's, to be honest, if it's a menu, you, you're worried about that. But that's just petty. I'm not going to care if it's a menu. I'm not going to fuss about it. No, but if it's yeah. in the game, that's, that can, that's, make, that's that can a... make certain games, which we'll see later yeah. on, unplayable. Ooh, it's an invisible platform. Mm -hmm. but yeah, we're going to get so to I, the next. So that just tells me that when we saw him in Rerez, dude, that he was just he's got a bad copy. He must have... pop a complaint about it for no reason. Or it's just a. Or it was just a glitch on the preview copy that affected some of them, but they might have worked it out. So next game you're going to review is Kid Chameleon, which was cool. This kid was all 90s. He was like the full-on 90s kid. Huh, radical. The sunglasses, the shades, the... Everything else. Let's see how cool this yeah. kind of looks like Marty McFly a little bit. It's just uh now I'm getting get, you know we mixed now I'm getting those Back to the Future um LG and flashback so PTS PTS flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. I was important to note that a few of these games you can get for free on the like on your mobile phone um, from Sega's I mean you used to be able to I don't know if you still can anymore but so this is like a, a weird this is kind of like a weird it's just a weird platform yeah platform again that's thank you <laughs> it's um kind of like Mario kind of yeah in a way yeah it's pretty decent graphics are not, not bad for its time weird definitely an interesting one to have on the list on the system here. Not bad, it's fun. I've never really played this, this is another game I never really heard of this game, so I don't know much about it other than what I Yeah, but you can give but now at least you can give it a shot and yeah. see if it's see if it's worth you know what so on which I might. I mean Probably Sega will. I think the Genesis does give you definitely a very good helping of what the Genesis was capable of. Yeah. Well, but at the same time, it's you know it gives you a fair shake of games. So. Yeah, yeah, um, pretty straightforward. We um, got the next one. We'll go. Let's do the next one. We'll do. Um, next one is we're gonna check out is Alicia Dragoon. I don't think I know. I never heard of this, and I don't think Derek ever hears this. Ever heard of this game? But I think I checked it out on YouTube, and I decided. It'll be one for him to review because I think it's one he's gonna really enjoy. I mean, just gotta get through the beginning part here. Which will take probably forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe, at least you can skip. Oh, thank God. Not like Castlevania Simply of the Night. <laughs> yeah, really. That's true. Alrighty, so let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, so I remember they showed the um, graphics on here. Alright, this is a demo, it looks like. Uh, they showed a pre 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 review. So I got, so I got Sith Lightning. Force lightning on here, which is nice. Huh. Power. Unlimited power! So I think the dragon is a visual representation of your HP on top of. Oh no! Dragon's got his own HP. I don't know, it generates too my own electricity, my own Sith Lightning, my Force Lightning. Well, that's Call the Force Lightning tool. Right away, he says it. This is cool. It's pretty fun. It's, it's, it's like, um. 
That, I think, is one of the best things a fantasy of version of Metroid. That's the way to describe it. To me. You know, fantasy version of you Metroid. You know, honestly, that's one of the things and I think... And boom, I'm dead. Wow, <laughs> one life and... One life, no continues? <laughs> I'm a war master. I think Yay. one of the best things about this is it gives you access to games that you normally wouldn't have played yeah. or may not have even heard of. Gives you a chance to really see those, just like the, uh, just like the Genesis or the Super card. Nintendo did. Now we're gonna go into some of the RPGs that this system includes. Um, Sega was never wasn't really known for as the master of the RPG, but they did have quite a few on there. And this one's a treasure one. The guy looks like Highlander. Now no one now anyone who's watching this is gonna hear high is gonna hear his voice. go through all this stuff. I gave him a good one to use to start to a preview. Ha <laughs> ha! Victory is mine. Yeah, if we can get some actual gameplay going, no one cares who you are. Uh, unskippable cutscenes. I just want to see the game. Well, we've been getting through some of these at a pretty good clip, so I think we're doing alright, but still. Unskippable beginning cutscenes. You know, this is why we got the save state function, because then once we get through all this crap, once you get through this for the first time, you could do a save state and get through it. Uh, those who want to use the bathroom right now, by all means, go ahead. We'll yeah, now would be a good chance for a bathroom break, because it looks like we're going to get this. Yeah. But I think M2 definitely did really good with the emulation on this. I mean, it's definitely running smoothly. I agree. Just like it would on a regular Sega Genesis. No, they, should, they were just describing the, the double tap issue on there, I mean, on the game. So oh, here we go. Here we go, finally after this five hours. This is the hours. actual game. I still have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh, come on, just let me get to the game. Yeah, I'm used to talking of RPGs, but at least in the RPGs, you don't take. Well, at least you can. At least in those RPGs, you can like, like pressing. I'm pressing every button combination there is, and it's not. It's just talking, and not like. Yeah. I mean, there are some RPGs I've played where the entry you have to go through, like for example, Final Fantasy VI. But to be fair, that intro isn't that long. I say it's like okay. two, three minutes. Tops. So now this is a. Alright, so this is isometric style. Kind of like Diablo. Yeah, like Diablo. It's kind of like an isometric Zelda-ish RPG. Yeah, kind of like that. Like Super Mario RPG in the later year, and then it came out in 96, or um, Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. Only it's like an action RPG where the fighting, yeah. trying to find a way to get out of this town. And yeah, but, but definitely fighting. closer to Diablo, if you look at the classic PC game. Oh, it's the fun game. Hey, hamburgers. Or if you thirsty milk. <laughs> Burgers and milk. Next to a cemetery. Oh, is that lovely? He's farming next to a cemetery. This would be interesting to do through a, for a playthrough, but... I don't know, this... I mean, I'm not even getting into any fights. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to find some kind of combat thing here so we could see some actual, like, how the battle systems work and everything. But five hours later, we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have five hours to figure all that out. Yeah, let's, um... So we put it... Oh, yeah, there we go. We'll, yeah, we'll go ahead and do the next game. Next on our list is... Next, we're going to go to the to an RPG that a lot of people actually like. It's one I've never really played, but I know a lot of people like it. It's the first in the Shining Force series. I take... Well, at least I go through text pretty fast. That's an upside. Yeah, you can hold the button and go through it fast. Yeah. I'm assuming that's supposed to be an elf girl, but she has the largest ears of any elf I've ever seen. Yeah, I'd probably, 
to a lot of fantasy movies and uh, cartoon shows. This isn't your typical um, RPG either. Kind of a sidelight. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but this is more of a um, strategy based RPG. Game God is custom. Maybe this is a kind of like, but, you know, playable. It reminds me of the original of the old Final Fantasy for the Nintendo. Remember those games? The even Final Fantasy games? Or closer to five, maybe. Or four. I don't know if see it again. Huh, weird. This is actually pretty cool. <laughs> I like this. I don't know, the simple RPG style. It's just so enjoyable, you know? You don't see that much with RPGs nowadays. give it a shot. I mean, it's definitely... I think from what I've read and what I've seen of the gameplay, it's definitely got a very Final Fantasy Tactics vibe to it. More so than a uh, traditional RPG. Take forever to keep it as an RPG, so they have to take us forever. It's like 20 minutes for actually. Most, I think old school RPGs were like took forever before we get to the actual battle. Go back to like Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, you have the intro. Say, but you can skip the um, cutscene on there. Well, where they have Terra, Wedge, and um, Biggs walk towards an arch. You can probably skip any of the um, no battle scenes, which is pretty fun. Three, four. Well, that makes it easy. At least I don't have to go around and ask for people to help. I just got my party. So now we go back to the king. I was walking back and forth, and basically getting passed out. So the cart will take you to the gate. more specific where the cart was. Well, part of it's just finding your way around. I mean... How green was my dragon? <laughs> okay. Strange. Hey, that's over there. So it's pretty much a Final Fantasy Tactics type of setup. Which is a very interesting style. Um, actually, or, or Fire Emblem. I think Fire Emblem started that this year. Maybe Fire Emblem was the one that started off that uh, style of um, RPG. It might have been. Yeah, I know it's a popular RPG series in Japan. In recent, in recent years, um, actually, last decade or so. Oh, like the strategy RPG. Yeah, style. Which in the last decade it became more notoriety in America. Around on a grid. 
then when you attack, it goes in kind of this style, which is pretty cool. I like that you gain experience just for attacking, not just when you win. D&D &D actually, we're gonna know it's D&D. &D. It's D&D &D the video game people, that's what this is. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the next one, we want to play this one a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Yeah. Next, next, uh, one. next we got Landstalker. That'll be our next choice game here. Let me just count these out, so 7, 11, Alright, so once we, hit, once we hit the Fantasy Star 4, we're going to take another little break and show off some of the other interesting features. So now Landstalker is next. It's, an, it's another action RPG by Climax. You know, you guys say what you will about RPGs. They had to come up with some, with some really creative things. Oh, this is a crazy beginning. It's like watching the end show. It's a little bit of the it's lost art. Looks like we're gonna have another isometric style. Again, with unskippable. And like with the previous two, we can't skip the beginning. Yeah, yeah but at least with, um, at least with what's it called, it, with, with um, Shining Force, it, was, it let you speed it up. This is giving you something interesting to look at. You're kind of looking at this like, what? It's like watching yeah, Indiana yeah. Jones or something. <laughs> I, can't, I know, I can't really... Now that you mention it, I can't really not think of that. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> A very stylistic type of RPG. Nigel gets 2,000 golds. Thousand gold, yeah. <laughs> All they care about is the treasure. This definitely does not give you vibes about, you know, the the motives of your hero. It seems like your hero's got less than uh less than less than zero. <laughs> less than good motives. Yep. I couldn't think of much. But free from off the office. <laughs> so you're playing as a guy who just steals, who just takes treasures. A treasure hunter. Really bad feeling about this. <laughs> keep your distance, but don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. How am I supposed to do that? I don't know. Fly casual. <laughs> Watch that 
2,000 gold with golds we just got. Hey, we made it like more gold. Oh, I bet we're going to be for all this stuff we're going through. Alright, so, he jumps. It's pretty fun, it's straightforward, yeah. I like this game. I, I, <laughs> this game is so much fun. It's another isometric style. Um... Looks like it's another isometric style. Um... You push the pushes up behind. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah. Maybe we gotta go in the cave. Oh. Uh, apparently. Yeah, we should figure that out soon. We you know what we're doing. Oh, well, I've never played this game. That's no excuse. Bow and death. This is one of those signs, you know, like high voltage, you know, you know what I repeat. Well, I've definitely played this game with my Genesis Mini. I love this game already. I only, I, this is so cool. I love how the, the graphics, it's really nice, you know, crisp feel. Hey, he's got 10 gold. He's got, now he's 1,890 more and he's back, back to where he used to be. Back to where he started, yeah. Yeah. Silver lining, people. Never forget that. Genesis does. Genesis. Just like in real life. Yeah, what's up? Hey, 15 gold! I'm there. A, I'll definitely be playing this some more later. That definitely is an interesting one. Um, like up your noises. Next, we're gonna next. Uh, fanboy you, here is gonna take over with um, another RPG. Yeah, make her some Streets of Rage too. So already, we're in good hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and already, I'm liking this. This is where the fun begins. Looks like you only get three choices, so... Yeah. yeah. Oh, let me see for the cutscenes. So it's a top down. Stuff. Oh, now this is the one that I thought was like a very. It's basically a Zelda. Sega's version of a Zelda game. Ah, oh, dang it. So much for stabbing people. Bad dog. Back. <laughs> different than Zelda, but... That was fun, though. That's just me. It's fine, it's fine. I mean, Rift Watch is good. It's like a Zelda clone, so to speak. Oh, that was easy. Prince Ali. <laughs> Prince Ali. <laughs> uh, and this was after, di after Aladdin came out, yeah. I think, so yeah. Pretty straightforward RPG, not bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright. Oh, so, 
else we got? What's next on the list? Well, next is my t I'm gonna take Fantasy Star Four. It's the uh, Sega version of Final Fantasy. Yeah, that that would pretty much be the your typical. Um, your this is your typical the fourth entry in the typical style of RPG for the Genesis. Yeah, it's like a Final Fantasy style RPG. Kind of fun, it looks like. Okay. Now, most of the first ones, they were all like more futuristic and everything. I kind of like these RPGs where they just kind of drop you in and they don't really... They don't really give you the details and you kind of uncover them later. Yeah. Kind of like a Luffy of One. Um, they start to, they give you the uh, hints of the Sinestrals and they drop you at the end of World of War and you don't know the characters. Um, and you defeat them and it flash forward 100 years later and then you start to take on again. Quite interesting. Sequel is clearly was definitely kind of tells the story of how they came before theirs came to be. And what happened? Yeah, he's been right in the corner. What are you blind or something? Now your party's up to two. Clearly how stupid people can be. She didn't notice he was over there by himself. Probably not. Wow. I find it interesting that this game, unlike most, is in a um, more old-fashioned style, whereas the other fantasy stars were more of kind of a futuristic style. But I mean, it's you know, it's your typical turn-based RPG. I mean, you're gonna yeah. When you get into fights, it's just gonna be your turn-based style, your RPG. You know, you fight enemies and level up. So we're 20, so now we are 28 games through this 42 game extravaganza. We're going to take another break and I'm going to show off another feature that a lot of people have talked about which I find pretty cool. Now, obviously we're here in America so we got all the American games, yep. but there are some things that were different in other regions. Like for example, I'm going to go to Sonic the Hedgehog which... Okay, one thing I'm definitely going to say I don't like is that you can't just load state right from the main menu. You have to actually go in and load. Yeah, that's a bit of a hassle. Dude. So, like, one of the things in the America version is notice how the background layer, like, especially the clouds, they kind of stay with the one layer of the background. See how they kind of just stay in one place? Sort of. You'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, in... The Japanese version, they do a lot of different stuff with that. Now, one of the cool things is they include the Japanese version. Just always make sure you keep an eye on where your English is. And then it changes the menu as well and the covers. So now you can see all the different covers. And, like, even when you're doing your side view, like, certain games that were smaller. <laughs> It's really cool. Wow. I gotta admit, the Sonic Spinball for Japanese color, color version is better. Why did they keep that in the American version? Uh, I'm not sure about where's. Okay, so here's Sonic 1. And then watch, wait till you see the clouds in the background of the first stage. They're alive. <laughs> they actually move in this one. They move. Yeah, I mean that's just one small example of what they do. Apparently, moving clouds was 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 um. Don't, don't and really like exist. um. Yeah. And
And like with Castlevania, which we haven't even gotten into that yet, but... I don't even know which one that is. Actually, we'll move on. That's right there. Oh, there it is. If we get Vampire Killer. Okay, that is a much cooler name. So we get the vamp we get vampire killer. Same thing. It's the same game, but it's just called something different in And it's even called something different in yeah. Europe. So like yeah, you go back. It's called Castlevania the New Generation. Which is not as cool as, you know. So like if we go to a let's go to a French style. And yeah, we still get the Sega Genesis. Oh no, I no, guess it was no. called. Uh, maybe it was no, we gotta find one that makes the Mega Drive. Yeah, there we go. So now that's the Mega Drive in Italian. Now we've got the different box arts again with the, a lot of the blue styling box arts. Yeah. And then it's called Castlevania. Here it's called Castlevania: The New Generation. I think probably because of the title "Blood Vampire Kingdom, Bloodlines" might be an issue, but because of blood in the title, which is kind of weird. You well, so what's really cool? I, what I find really cool is that you know, like I say, you get multi-region ROMs of these games included. Right. So if you wanted to see how a game differed, and a lot of times it's more than just a title; the whole game will be different. For, for example, um, everyone knows Dr. Robotnik Mean Bean Machine here, which we'll get to. It was a pu it's the cla it's one of the puzzlers that Sega had you know big success with. Yeah. But it was not always known as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I mean, anyone who knows the history of games will. Everyone knows that these were just added in to kind of get people hyped up because, you know, you're linking it to something everyone loved, which was Sonic. Yeah. Kind of like, um, Star Fox Adventures. Technically, it wasn't supposed to be a Star Fox game. Yeah, and then it failed to be what it was supposed to be. But... That game was awesome, though. Yeah. yeah. But as a Star Fox game... Yeah. This is it was a good yeah. game, but as a Star Fox game, it was not good. Now, yeah, yeah. Weird, if we go out. to now, if we go to the Japanese version for a minute. Oh wow! I love the Japanese version. It's so cool. Um, Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean isn't listed on here at all. Instead, we get. If I can find it, I don't know Japanese, so... I think, no, I think they'll change the name. It should, it should still be English, though. Um, this is it. Yeah, Poyo Poyo. I think It'll just be Poyo Poyo. Poyo Poyo. And I mean, you got obviously gotta fumble your way through the menus, but... Really weird, though. It's, 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 like, with, it's like Mario Brothers, too. Japanese and US versions. And it gives you a chance to really see kind of what different versions of the games look like. So you could be like, huh, you know, this is what we didn't get. And then, one more example to show why this is a good thing. As anyone knows, Contra was always known for being one of the hardest games ever made by the hand of man. Oh my god, but, but those are fun. They're but they were so hard. But did you know that as hard as the Genesis one was for us, it was a lot easier in Japan? <laughs> wow. Yep, the Japanese had an easier time of it. Why did we wait to Because in the Japanese game, which, you know, we can't read what it says, you got a health bar. So instead of it being one hit death, you actually got a health bar. And unlimited continues. Finally, an easy, easy version of Contra. <laughs> well, what this definitely does is if you wanted to play this game, but you can't, you know, it's too hard for you to play in an American style, 
then you could play it in a different language and actually, you could play the other regions and actually maybe get somewhere on it. Makes it for the fact you don't have the, um, can't, can't use the Konami code, that's why. <laughs> True. <laughs> But again, you gotta make sure you keep an eye on where your menus are and everything, just so you know what the languages are. Otherwise, you know, you'll... But then, it, I like it also changes not only the games, but I think that's a good feature, though, to include multi-region games. Oh, I know, I love it. I think it's really cool. <laughs> it's unique. Alright, so now we're gonna go to the black backgrounds for the rest. Next is you. You're gonna do... Oh, we gotta sort by John. You're gonna play Wonder Boy in Monster World. Wonder Boy. I think I've heard of I've heard of this game. This game I have heard of. I didn't really get to, didn't really play. I know because I, I never knew my cousin ever had this game, but I've heard of it. It's 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 kind of like um. It's a side scrolling RPG. Like a Mega Man RPG. Sort yeah. of. It's, it's more so of a cool. side scroller, yeah. you know, type of RPG. It's not really. You know your turn-based style, but it's a good one, and it's one of the ones that had its birth on the Master System. You gotta go out the door. See how the door is clear, you guys. See? Here. That's an interesting effect, though. Standard RPG stuff, Princess kidnapped, and you gotta save the day. This is simple, cute little right. RPG. Your turn. Well, we're gonna we're gonna lead that to one of the first one of the big things that's on the system is, and one of the things I love about these classic consoles is they sometimes put on games that you didn't we didn't get here, so it's official translations. Like you see, this one was released 2012. I know. It's like I'm. You look at it like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Well, technically, it came out. It was in pre-94. Come 
are the enemy? Uh, yeah, I know I'm probably supposed to be talking to some of these people, but... Okay. Just like the other Monster World game, very... Kind of like a side-scrolling Zelda. I mean, you got the sword, you got three hearts. It's like, what if Zelda were a side-scroller and not talking Link to the Past? I mean, outside of Zelda 2. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I meant Zelda 2. No, I know what you meant. Like, yeah. Which is interesting that they don't ever do any more games in that style. Like, I'd like to see some other games in that sort of same stylish. Same style of play. Top down, we have for top down and open world Zelda games now. I'd like to see some 2D, you know, side scrolling Zeldas. That could be, you know, interesting. And not, and no, the CDI ones do not count. Those are not, those are not Zelda games, that was a weather bubble. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't mention those games. Yeah, those, never, those games never happened. Yeah, those, those were terrible. But that's what the system offers you as far as RPGs go. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into some puzzle games. Because what, kind of what kind of system would this be without some of the big puzzlers? And Columns was a big puzzle game for the system. It was Sega's answer to Tetris. Not as fun as Tetris. Nothing fun. Uh, Tetris. Some, some people actually prefer <laughs> this to Tetris. The fact that you can, you know, match them up any direction, so you can match them up diagonally, horizontally. Uh, they're four games. The only thing you can't, the only thing you can't do, is go, is move, is turn them, so they kind of stay right where they're at. But that's part of what makes the game challenging is you gotta stack them up and work with what with the limitations you've got. And yeah, the music's all right. I mean, very kind of relaxing, combo. Now it's getting a little faster. I mean, what else can I say? It's Columns. It's uh, Genesis. It's one of the big puzzle games for the Genesis. But I don't think it's one that too many people got into. I think our next one, which, you know, our fanboy here is going to talk about, is definitely one that a lot of people were more into than Columns. So this is just Sonic this is just Poyo Poyo with Sonic characters but it's a very interesting sort of puzzle game fun really no it is but fun it's just really hard <laughs> and it's hard I mean, it ramps up the difficulty really quick in this game I think by the time you get to level 3, it's like, oh my god, how hard can this get? I think I like the music better in this one anyway, too. I think the music's definitely a lot better. No, drop it. Yeah, get in there. And that's one of the more interesting things. You can combine them in different configurations to get, except for diagonally. Diagonally does not work, because they won't connect. It's 
definitely one of the puzzle games you gotta kind of get used to. It's, it's really tricky to, I mean, to, to master the lure, but it's fun. Once you think it's really a lot of fun. Well, that's the thing about puzzle games on this system. Hard, you know, easy to learn, harder to master is kind of what makes puzzle games on <laughs> this system. That's the hard part, but I'm not going to lie. And unlimited continues. Funny. That was fun. And then the last puzzle game was a big surprise. It was a huge shock when they announced this, because up until this, I didn't even know this game existed. No, we are like, yeah, we're familiar with, we all know about the I mean, we all knew about Tetris. Tetris. We all know Tetris. Everyone knows Tetris. But I did not know there was a version of this on the Sega Genesis. But this is a great game to test if the double input thing is a problem, man. I'm pressing just one direction, one little click at a time, and I'm not seeing any input. So, I mean, what can you say about this except it's Tetris. And it's here. I mean, it's Tetris and it's on the system, so... There's really nothing else you can say about it. I mean, if you don't have an NES Classic, or a... Well, even if you have an NES Classic, they didn't include Tetris on either of those, so... Unless you modded it. Unless you modded it, <laughs> but you can that's yeah. definitely something that's do that you can do on those things, so and the funny thing and the thing is about Tetris, you can literally you can play it on any device, even those old flip phones. Yep, and it's never really changed. I mean the no. basics of this game have stayed the same ever since it was first released in Russia. <laughs> During the Cold War, mind you. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was the first I mean Gaming Historian really does an interesting uh, look at the history of Tetris, which I found to be quite fascinating. Like, did you know the guy who designed this game didn't see any royalties on it until recently? I see. Because he developed it while he was working for the Russian government, and they own everything that is done on their time. So he never had... He was never given royalties on the game he designed. I would imagine after we finally got them, it was probably you know, billions of dollars, if not millions. I don't know if he got like per in perpetuity from back. I think he just eventually they gave it to him because it was a big deal. Well, I like how yeah. the backgrounds are. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if they got he gave the back pay for all the money he should have gotten, he probably rival Bill Gates right now. And but I mean, this Buffett. is. But I mean, this was interesting because it was made. But I think they just didn't release it because they didn't want to take on Nintendo juggernaut about, you know, lawsuits and everything. That's possible. Because I think Nintendo owned the rights to Tetris, and Sega was just trying to sneak one in there, and their lawyers probably decided not the best of ideas. Yeah, I'm going to have to just let tell you, no, so if you could just hold off and really release Tetris for the Genesis, that'd be so I think that's what led to us getting columns and stuff. So that because you had to have some puzzlers on a system. The puzzling kind of puzzlers. Yes. And that's the puzzles in a nutshell. So those are your three puzzle games. Now we're gonna get into some fun stuff. Uh, a lot of these are your favorite types of games. You got the shooter type, shooters, arcade style games. This was not. This is one of the more interesting ones. Opa, Opa. You basically gotta go around. It's like a Defender style. Fantasy <laughs> stuff's kind of like Defender style. You go around. You basically gotta go from side to side destroying the bases. That's weird. <laughs> that is a weird. It's like Kirby with her shooter. <laughs> and then you can go into the shop and. You know, there's parts you can buy, so like you could buy different engines, different beams. One of the interesting things about this though is if you is the more stuff you buy, it gets more expensive later. So that gives you a little bit of a strategy element to the game that was not really in a lot of shooters at that point. A lot of shooty shoot games are just go around and blast everything you can. But this game, 
added that little bit of a strategic element. You know, do you go and buy the late? Do you go and buy the thing? Do you go and buy the weapons, even though you know later on they're going to be more expensive? Uh, do you save your money and not get the weapons? That sort of thing. It's a fun game. I'm definitely going to play it a little more. But that's a Super Fantasy Zone. You got the next three in a row. Let's start off with Thunder Force 3. A Legend third from the Science School Intruder from the Legendary Technosoft. Let's see what we got. Let's see what this is. This is your type of game, man. You like? Oh yeah. You said earlier you love these side-scrolling shoot 'em up. Darius Twins, Sonic Wings. Oh, Air Fires for you, Americans. <laughs> Cut off one head, two more shall take his place. Switch weapons, like, dude. What are, oh, there you go. Oh, that one had back oh, shot. Oh, that one had a shot of the back. What's the next one? What's the next one? Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Got the Shatter Red, too. Accelerate to attack speed. I like that you just come right back where you die. Like, no wasted time, no nothing. You just. Figure out how to make the best use of your weapons. This is definitely your type of game. Oh man, this is addictive. No way, man. No way. Find yourself another pets again. No I think that's what made these shooters so great was they were so addictive back then. Yeah, the seven continues, so that's yeah. All no, uh, that's a lot of fun. I definitely recommend it. What's next on the list? Strider. Strider. It's funny. I never heard of the game, but I heard of the character, which is kind of weird. Well, it's a Capcom game, so we already yeah. know that's a point yeah, in its favor. I only heard of him from Marvel vs. The, the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting games, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Point in its favor is that it's a Capcom style game. Kind of like Captain Falcon. I've heard of Captain Falcon. Now again, this was. Now again, this was Sega saying, you know, this is the arcade experience at home. Now, real quick to point out here, what we was talking about with that glitch thing, glitch we were talking about, is double tap. He's right here. He was concerned about me using the double tap here would be. So we evolve. right now. There's a double tap on. Yeah, I'm thinking he's gonna. I'm thinking he got just a bad, like a glitchy unit. Maybe some of the first runs they sent out. Yeah. They may. Well, you know what? Maybe that's why he sent out the first run. Maybe he did his part for them and showed, hey, you know, this is a problem. So they were able to figure out what the code was doing that and patch it with their in the firmware. I I think so. That sounds about right. Before the main units got released. But I mean, this was definitely, you know, showing off the power of the Genesis, showing arcade-style stuff that you could do. Kind of looks like a Ninja Gaiden type thing. Yeah, like a Capcom version of Ninja Gaiden. Carefully. <laughs> Not careful enough. Oh, no, a lot of fun. Once you get the hang of it, you know what you're, you're doing. Yeah. I would say it's fun. Yeah. And now you got the third, ar the next arcade game, Shinobi 3. Shinobi 3. This I heard of. Uh, it's kind of like the Genesis version of the um, Ninja Gaiden games. Yeah, we didn't get Shinobi. They didn't give you Shinobi 1 or 2, but you get 3, which a lot of people actually prefer. Return of the Ninja Master. Thank you. 
Hopefully if you get close enough you get use a melee attack, but otherwise you use your shurikens to fight. Yeah, definitely a Ninja Gaiden version of um or Sega Genesis. What do you think of this game? Have you ever played this one? Was, no. Was this your first time this ever? This is the first time. You might I was I was limited to, to the um type of um See, I didn't have a lot of people that had Genesis games growing up. So most of these games out there that I have here, I may have heard of, but I never played them until today. I wonder if the club was ever censored in the you know, game that came out. I don't know if they had blood, but you could definitely find out. Yeah. Probably have the Japanese version on here, and we know they don't censor a lot. They don't really, because they don't really care. Because they're, 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 not, they're not stuck up like Sega us. really did do a lot with the background players. Ooh, yeah. Oh, one hit? Got it. I don't know if it's one hit, but definitely got it. You learn how to fight. You learn definitely learn enemy patterns and stuff in these games. Pretty straightforward. Um, it was a lot of fun. Oh, oh, yeah. Here you go. Sir. Now, now, the next game, the final four, the amaze, the final four games are four games. A crumb to the crumb. That are the heavy hitters on this. That if you were, if you were ever on the fence of buying this system, we have four these four games mine. definitely make this system worth it. Alrighty, first one we got is Contra Hardcore. Everyone knows Contra. Oh my god, Contra. What can you say about Contra? What do you, can you say that? What else do just, you say? Just the name, hearing Contra. Come on. You on, You just automatically think of... Oh, all I can say is Contra is one of the greatest sh um, shmups of ever. side scoring shooters ever. I mean, yeah, you got Metal Slug. But come on. And if again, it, it, it nothing comes close to Contra. And again, this game, at a minimum, according to the price value, just for the cartridge of the game, you're looking at forty dollars for this. So right there, paying eighty for this system. And again, you get both the Japanese and the American versions and the European. So the big difference is this one has limited continues and. One hit kill, one hit death. With the um, with the European version, because you're not allowed to show like this kind of running gun action in Europe. Obviously, the whole it's just something they have rules of. Like did you like uh, back in the day, you could they couldn't call them the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They had to call them the Ninja the Hero Turtles <laughs> because ninjas cool. are not allowed in in. Europe, so they had the name of the Hero Turtles. Yeah, and just to break it down for those, um, so you got 80 bucks for a 42 game system, and basically paying a buck 90 per game. Like I say, this game, this is definitely a heavy hitter. This is definitely something you want in this system. Now, another, he the next heavy hitter. Yeah. Game fan or um, Nintendo fan here has been foaming at the mouth <laughs> to try this because he's never, and I'll be honest, I've never played it, yeah. but it is definitely one of the heavies on this. Now, Castania, now this is in Europe, so we so we get the American title. It's called Castania Bloodlines. A little tidbit for you. Notice here the names. What names don't you see? You don't see a Belmont name because according to the history, the vampire killer. Um, but it was longer effective, was longer able to be used by the Belmonts. So now it was passed on to the Morrises, which Morrises, come in, yeah. which come into play in the book. Yeah, actually, Quincy J Quincy Morris is in the actual book, so yeah, it really ties that all together. Now this game takes place believe, during World War Two, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. World War One, I, I think. World actually. War One. Yeah, I think. Oh, it's okay, Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he was. Busy and this is the first game that lets you pick one of two because. Yeah. You can see the with Eric Lacard, he's got what's called the Alucard spear. 
It's supposed to be the Alucard, but they call it the Alcard Spear in this. But it's basically a spear designed by Alucard to help yeah. defeat the forces of evil. And again, the Vampire Killer Legendary Whip uses to defeat um, Dracula is no longer War is no longer be able to use by the Belmont, so they could use to be a was that how the story went? Uh, it's one of those. Something like that, yeah. Because of no, because um, Trevor had a curse. Tre Trevor became cursed. Oh no, it wasn't Trevor. It was Richter became cursed in Symphony of the Night when he fell in darkness? Yes. Okay. I knew so, it was something like that. Okay. So now and now you have the great Morris to use this to use this game to use it all the vampire killer. So this is what we have. Sega, if you're a Sega fan, you had this Oh, game. look at the blood in that one. But if you were a Super Nintendo fan, you had Castlevania 4, Super Castlevania 4, excuse me. Which is definitely, you know, some people call, say that's a better vert game because you have more control over yeah. your character. It's really... But this game is just... Wow. Yeah. This game is a continue to see. The Super Castlevania 4 is more or less a remake of the first one. Oh, world. look at it. Yeah. That was freaking sweet. Whoa. Well, I guess we can definitely say on this game, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Oh, damn straight. Let's try the stairs. Let's walk up the stairs. Can't move walk? No, I can't. Oh, I can't move walk. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you. I think you're gonna like this game. I think I'm gonna like playing this later. Unfortunately, on. Uh, what I wish you could do is wish you could shoot, hit fireball, you know. With it, like all different directions, like um, Belmont did Super Castlevania 4. But that's a unique thing only to Super Castlevania 4. It's yeah. never let you do that any other. Yeah. But yeah, so it's so. All in all, this game is pretty freaking awesome. I'm not gonna lie. It is great. I like Hit it. the wall, hit the wall. Oh yeah, get around. Right. Hit the wall, man. You can see it's cracked. There's also the stairs. Pork chop. There'll be a pork chop in here. Book. That's no. You can't eat a book. Yeah. Of course, we all know the greatest casting game of all time would probably be Symphony of the Night. Oh, dude, it did something with your whip. Yeah, it made the Oh, you only get the whip until you take it. Oh, that's how. Yeah. Hard as nails, it's like every other Castlevania, but I now... Actually, the difficulty is not really, it's pretty good. It's better than Castlevania 3. Now, just so you, now, just to give you an idea of this one, this game, loose, just the cartridge, runs you around $57. So those two, so this game and Contra Hardcore alone give you the value of the system, and then some. And again... Uh, for those who math, each game on here, 42 games on an $8 system, it's $1.90 a game. And unlike at games, this is official licensed hardware. This is like really good. Truly well, I think we I think we need to get them to the last two games now on this. I think so too. And now, truly set Genesis is life from lifelessness. Now this game, this next game we're gonna see here was actually not released on this system at all. It's a port of an arcade game. And it's been painstakingly changed over to work on the Genesis. It's originally an ultra-wide version, an ultra-wide game, but it's been brought down to fit on the screen here. Yeah. Uh, for those who've made... I know you've played Darius. Yeah. You, you like Darius games. Darius Twin is for Super Nintendo. That game is a great shooter. The music alone is probably the best part of the game. This is similar to that. It's more of their arcade style of the game. Um, I can tell. I mean, I can tell you right now. This is definitely similar to the, the Super Nintendo version. The music is, yeah, it's pretty good. It's got it's a little darker there, I would say. But you know, I, I'm not playing. I like this. Is pretty good. Get the music. Someone set us up the bomb. My armor increased. I kind of I like that. You're yeah, increasing you your that armor and stuff. I kind of like that. You can get that the other one. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Is this one you're definitely gonna? Uh, I might, yeah. You waste. You might waste some hours on. I probably could, but 
I gotta be honest, I'm heavily biased towards the original on the Super Nintendo. And now, the last game that... Now this game right here was a unique specimen. It was released in other regions on cartridge, but we never, but when it was brought over to America, it was decided to make it a Sega Channel exclusive to try to sell the Sega Channel. Mm -hmm. it, this game up until now has never had an official physical release ever in North America. This is the first time we're getting a physical release of this. Yeah. Now true, you could import it. It is import friendly, if, especially if you mod your Genesis to do that. But if you import it from Europe, it's not going to sound right. It, the frame rate's going to be all off. Mega Man the Wily Wars. Oh, and just for those who you to point out, um, if you think Mega Man, you think you know the Mega Man trill for through Mega Man games, you are very wrong. Let um, put this way, Cut Man is even more difficult to, it's difficult to defeat. And because this, there's no select button on here, good luck with, with a select pause to get the left man. Well, they took, I think Three they took... Three strikes and you're out. They took that. that, they took that out for, just to make it that much harder. Yeah, but they, now it's the hardest Mega Man game of all time again. So good luck, good luck against the left man and the yellow devil. But I mean, the, the thing with this game is that, you know, the music be when you play the European version, everything's slowed down, your timing gets really thrown off on it. And it's just, it's great to see it here. I mean, the graph, I always, as soon as I first heard about it, I loved, you know, the graphical style. I love the idea of having, you know, the first three Mega Man games on one thing to play. I mean, obviously this was before the Mega Man, like, Legacy Collections and stuff, but even the Legacy Collection, they don't do this. None of the other collections of these games included something like this. I mean, this was basically, it felt like Sega's version of Super Mario All-Stars. Pretty much. Uh, All-Stars and All-Stars and Super Mario Well, I'm just thinking All-Stars okay. with, the, with the original three games. Okay. But they were like totally remade from the ground up with better graphics and sound. Yeah. And then they released. Oh, good job. Good job. I, I, was gonna fall there. I thought I was going to fall there. Yeah, that was yeah. luck. Um, then they released the Lost Souls, which was actually the Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. 2. And did you know this actually has a story to it? Like, this game actually has a purpose. Dr. Wily is basically trying to rewrite history and attack Mega Man in the past. So Mega Man's got to go through all these all these games, all these old bosses and then he fights in a special a special tower that's only ever been in this game. Okay, so the Mega Man we're playing is the Mega Man from the future. They go back to the past. I'm not sh I'm I think so. If that's the case, then why don't we have the charge charge of the dash? Same. But it does have somewhat of a plot. I mean, I know it's you should say true the original, but if that is by the if you were to believe by the story that Dr. Wily would travel back in the past and the Mega Man we're playing is the Mega Man that came back to the past to stop him. He's gonna take you back to the past. No, this is still not like that. Logically speaking, he should have a charge shot in the jet and the dash. Right. In the slot. Unless, of course, you know. But I gotta love how everything's got a lot more detail, a lot more colors. Everything just pops more. The sound is even is way improved. But it's still Mega Man. It's still that classic style Mega Man if you so I mean if you like the 8 bit styling you got it you can get it on the Nintendo and stuff but if you like the 16 bit you know styles you can definitely get it so this is the way to do it so there we go we have officially gone through all 42 games on this system so I'm going to turn it off and we're going to go ahead and give it give us our final thoughts and wrap this up
All right, so Derek, so, and fanboy, we've been on this incredible journey with this thing. You got to play a bunch of the games on it. You got to see all of them on here. So what are your thoughts on this system? I like it. <laughs> it was just as uh, crazy as they hoped it would be. Um, I'm just grateful that the issues that they were talking about were only limited to the um, previews. The preview um, systems, not the actual ones. Yeah, it's still in the menu. Yeah. I mean, it still is on the menu, but the menu's, the menu's easy enough to get around that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to make a fuss with the menu. As long as the games are no issue as well, or no issues, I'm fine. The selections are great. They release games that we that they released the games that we never had before. Mega Man, Tetris, Darius. Darius, yeah. Um, yeah, and some classics, some, obviously some great ones on there. Yeah. Is it def in your opinion? Is it worth a buy? Does it meet the standards of Nintendo set with the classic uh, moniker? Well, it's double the Nintendo one, but to be fair, the Nintendo one can easily mo can be modified. It's someday this will be modified as well, but definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's got two controllers. Definitely, the length is not an issue on here. <laughs> now, obviously, my only can if I had an issue, if there's no six point controller. But that being said. You can always buy one. Yeah, you can always get one no separate. I think the cheapest one they got is like twenty dollars. Um, twenty bucks. I definitely gotta say this is a buy. I mean, I'm glad I bought it day one. This is definitely, this definitely worth the wait. I mean, I'm glad that Sega decided to go with M2 on this and not stick with uh, At Games for making this mm -hmm. thing. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Um, the 42 games. I think they had a. There were a couple of misses on this. I mm -hmm. think. Um, I personally would have liked to see something like Maximum Carnage. I would have loved mm -hmm. to see... I'd have loved to see Aladdin on here. Yeah, Jurassic um, Park for me. Jurassic Park would have been great. Yeah. Um, Musha, which is another mm -hmm. really rare but hard to get game. Some would have people been good. say Rocket Adventures. I think that's what it's called. Rocket, Rocket, Rocket Knight. Rocket Knight Adventures. Thank you. That would have um, been great to have on X -Men here. X-Men games. X-Men would have been... Those in games were... I, I remember playing those games I was like... If you're going to put one on there, though, I think you'd have to put on Clone Wars. I mean, as much as one was would have been great, I think yeah. Clone Wars would have been... Yeah. Definitely would have been on a choice to be on there. Yeah. Right, did, George, did George Lucas have anything to do with that game? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that... I think that the build quality's good on it. I love the... I do love the multi-region thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely going to make it so, like, if I want to really get into Contra, it'll definitely make it to where I can get into that game. Yeah. That's, that, is, that is something they didn't have on any of the versions, PlayStation or Nintendo. I could play a... Re I could literally play... I don't, I don't have just to play um, me, Dr. Rock, DD Machine. I can play Poyo Poyo. I also think the... Just the little touches, like, the, the fact that it's... They have all these things that are moving... Even though they don't even do anything, yeah, like there's no purposes. Like there's no purpose for you to have the volume slider being able to move up and down, <laughs> other than to have it because yeah. it did it on the original. Yeah, I think I think it's great to different aesthetic purposes, give that nostalgic feel. So, in conclusion, I definitely think it's worth a buy. I think if you don't have it yet, you should definitely run out and get it. Don't pay scalper prices because stores should have plenty of them. No. But no. definitely pick this up. It is definitely worth adding to the classic lineup. Yeah, it's definitely going to look great on my shelf, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing some great stuff with this and getting some good gaming action on. Mm -hmm. And if it can be modded one day, which I'm thinking it will be, yep. we're going to definitely go over some of that stuff and see what yeah. we get with that. So, the future of gaming lies in the past. Yeah. So again, I want to thank all of you for watching. I'm glad we were able to do this tonight. Um, again, the Path to Affiliate Contest is ongoing. Follow the, you know, rules are up there for it. Definitely want to be part of that. Um, all my links are up there. I definitely hope you guys definitely follow me. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, remember, step one, you got to be a follower. So go to my Twitch, be a follower. Um, you can click on the link below. If you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button on this video. I hope it helps you make your decision on whether or not you want the Sega Genesis Classic or if you're going to pass on it. You've seen all the games. You've seen how they run. You've seen the double input issue does not affect the gameplay. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything else we can really say about this. Um, one more thing I want to say. Sega, Tower of Power, bring it to America. We want it. We want the Tower of Power. You definitely, you guys, 
put the port in there. You guys put the little grooves for where the feet on the for where the Sega CD would lock into it. You put all that detail in. You made this cartridge flap, which doesn't even work <laughs> for anything. Give us this thing. Give us the Tower of Power. I will. I mean, I personally will gladly pay thirty dollars for that thing. Um, once again, we got my. We had my buddy here, Nintendo fanboy eighty five. Thank you so much for coming in, sir. I look forward uh, to doing welcome. some more. I hope we can do more of these types of things in the future. Maybe do some game playing in the future together yeah. sometime. And I want to thank you guys for watching tonight. Um, if you're on YouTube, thanks for watching. Now that's what I call gaming. More of these things will be coming, I promise. Um, I know I've been doing a lot of uh, Twitch streams on here, but I do appreciate you guys sticking with me. And I will catch you guys Monday night at 10 p.m. at the normal start time. Uh, we're going to continue on, I think, with some Breath of Fire, and maybe we'll fire up some more Sega Genesis. Who knows? It could be fun, and we'll just we'll rock out. Once again, I'm GamerGod85. This is... Tenofan85. And we will catch you later. Game on.